Hello again, Julie Walker back here today with another lesson in public speaking in advanced types of ways. Today we're talking about lectern speaking. A lot of times this is confused with something called podium speaking, but what a lot of people don't realize is that this is not a podium, this is a lectern. Podium is something you stand on and a lectern is something you stand behind. So today we're talking about lectern speaking. And when you get that question on Jeopardy right someday, or that answer right on Jeopardy someday, whatever it is, uh, I'd like a cut of the winnings, please. That would be great. So today we're going to talk about lectern speaking. First things first, let's talk about where you should be standing in relationship to your lectern. Right? Don't span, stand with your stomach right up to the lectern because we're going to see that that's going to be stifling your uh, natural body posture. All right? Take a step back from the lectern. So you're about 10 to 12 inches away, like one of our meetings talked about, okay? This will give you the movement to be able to relate with your audience and be away from your script. You should, in all likelihood, if you're speaking from the podium, you probably are a lecturer, and you probably have something that you're going to be speaking from, and that's why you have the lecturer in there. But that doesn't mean that you should be tied to it so directly, all right? Let's not... When we're speaking from our notes with our podium here, the goal is not to be completely reading from it, to be completely dependent on it, to be hiding from our audience. No, the goal is to use these as a reference so we can still reference our audience members. And if we can get out of that space of being directly behind the lectern, we can relate more directly with our audience members. So let's talk about the ways that we use our hands when we're working with a lectern. One of the things to think about is lightly putting your hands onto the lectern. Right? Don't grip the lectern. You and the lectern aren't that close just yet. All right? We don't grab on for dear life. It's not here to save our lives. The lectern is here as a tool for us to use. So if you're white knuckling it, as in you're holding the lectern so tightly that you have a white knuckle because it's so tightly clenched, you're doing too much here. If you're leaning on the lectern, you're doing too much. It's too informal, okay? Unless you're going for a really informal kind of feel, don't lean on the lectern, okay? You should be able to stand and deliver the presentation as if you were not delivering it at all, or the lectern was kind of crappily made or it was a music stand or something. Don't depend on the lectern to help you stand up, okay? Another thing to think about with the lectern is the kind of notes you're gonna be using. Now, speaking from a manuscript speech is a whole different thing. Speaking from an outline is a whole different thing. I'm assuming you have those skills coming into it, but when you're preparing your notes, whether it's a manuscript or an outline that you're speaking from, Make sure that your notes are going to be big enough for you to see. So if you're standing three to four feet, two to four feet away from your notes, your eyes are that far away from it, you probably don't want to have size nine font for the notes. You probably don't want to have a scribbly kind of font for your notes. Instead, you want to have a nice clear font, probably size 14 or larger. You want this to be something that you can easily be able to see. When you're speaking from notes on a lectern, Another thing that I would suggest doing is only having notes on one side of the piece of paper that you're using. I don't know why you wouldn't speak from a piece of paper if you're speaking from a lectern. That's something I would consider to be a normal part of speaking with a lectern. Why use note cards? You don't need to pick them up. You can have them sitting here and you can have your hands free to gesture as you'd like to. So just print on one side of the piece of paper because then as you finish one page, you can smoothly move one piece of paper behind or over the top of the next one in order as you're going through your presentation. You don't have to like flip it over and try and figure out what it is. It's, and by printing just on the one side, you are making it less conspicuous for your audience members that you're referring to your notes. Let's talk about gestures. Gestures behind a lectern are more difficult because um, you're losing this whole bottom part of your body. You can't see anything that's down here. So if you have small gestures that are happening at the sides of your body, yes, we can see you're gesturing somehow, but we don't know what those gestures mean. Okay? If your hands are on the side of the podium, you're reading on it, which we've already said not to do, some people will gesture like this. They'll say, maybe you have this or you have this, and you kind of gesture your body a little bit. It looks like you're clinging to that lectern for dear life. Don't do that. Remember, we're standing back 10 to 12 inches, and instead of having gestures that are down here or up here or somewhere weird like that, think about your gestures within the Tyrannosaurus Rex arms range, right? So your elbows are kind of at your sides area, and you've got about this much range, sunshine arms around this kind of area to be able to gesture for your lecture, okay? So arms are out here, don't lean on a podium, all those kinds of things. A thing that I think a lot of people forget about when they're thinking about podium speak or lectern speaking is what are you doing with your feet? And what are you doing with your posture? 
lot of times we're going to kick off to the side a little bit because we're thinking about it, which we said you can kind of do if you're going for that informal thing. If you're giving a formal presentation, which is what we're preparing for with this particular kind of speech, you don't want to have your, your hip jutting out or something like that because it conveys that you're not really engaged in what you're saying. You really could be doing this or not doing this. You don't care. It's not something you want to think about. Right? But instead of doing that, make sure that your body is engaged. Your shoulders are back. You're up. You're ready to perform. Your head is up. You're held high. You are kind of encompassing some of the basic parts of what a dancer does to prepare themselves. You've grounded your feet. Your hips are spread, are not spread apart. Your hips are, your feet are about hip width apart, which gives you a nice strong base. Your knees aren't locked, so you don't pass out when you're speaking. And you are confidently standing in front of your group of people. One thing that a lot of people kind of forget about, again, is what happens with your feet. So I'm going to show you one of the things that we can see if you are not controlling what's happening with your feet behind the left arm. Okay, so let's say that you're standing behind a lectern and you kind of start moving your feet around or you jut your knee out, and you start tapping or you're kind of got a shoe that comes off and you're kind of flipping it around and stuff. This is all stuff that I've seen, not just in student speeches, but also in speeches of my colleagues. Drives me batty. Don't do it, don't cross your feet back here because one, for one thing, you're not going to be able to stand in front of your audience uh, without having to lean on the lectern, which we've already talked about is not a great idea. For another thing, it shows, again, that you're not engaged in the presentation. If I'm crossing my feet back here, even if you can't see my feet, you can see that my posture has changed. I'm no longer standing with even shoulders. They're at an angle. I have to lean on here. My rings are going to hit this. My bracelet's hitting this. But you can you know, negate by not having rings or a bracelet on. But again, it's just another layer of complexity you don't need to have. And then you're going to uncross your feet. And you're going to need to do this. You're going to end up being less formal than what you want. And typically, if you're standing, if it's formal enough, you're standing behind a lectern, you probably want to have a formal presentation. If it's so informal that you could have your, your shoulders changing or whatever like this, my guess is you probably don't need to be speaking from a lectern anyways. So hopefully these few tips have been useful for you. And I look forward to seeing how well you speak from a lecture in the future.